Hey guys, so today we're going to be doing a full day wear test of the new Chantecaille Future Skin Cushion Foundation. I am so excited for this new cushion from Chantecaille. I love Chantecaille foundations. They were kind enough in sending me this beautiful PR kit. Look at this case. It is like a giant cushion. <laughs> they sent over four shades, which are included in this case here. So there are eight shades all together, and so they sent me the four lightest. But let me just show you here in the little card that was included. Here are the eight shades. So these are the four that they sent me, these four down here, and then here are the four deeper shades. So Shantikai being a very philanthropic uh, company, they are um, donating one bottle of milk for every cushion that is purchased. And that bottle of milk is to feed an orphan baby elephant. Look at this picture. I nearly like fell to the ground into a ball of tears just looking at that picture. I was like, oh my God, I love elephants. Look at that little baby. Look at that little baby. So anyway, they're partnering with the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust, which is not the first time that they've partnered with them. And they do have an, a rehabilitation program for these orphaned elephants. So I did want to mention that because I just think that is so amazing. But let's move on to the foundation. Just a quick word about the foundation. It says it's their latest revolutionary foundation. Um, it's skincare makeup hybrid. It's a water-based foundation. It boasts an innovative formula that infuses the skin with powerful anti-aging bionymph peptides and a network of botanical sugars that protect from pollution while leaving skin looking flawless. I am ready. So I'm not positive, but I do think that the shade names uh, correspond with shade names in their other lines. They do have vanilla, which is the shade that I generally use. I believe it's like the third, yes. So Aura is very fair with cool undertones. Alabaster is fair with balanced undertones. Uh, vanilla is medium light with balanced undertones. Again, that's the one I usually uh, wear. And then nude is medium with soft rose undertones. So the reason why I'm pointing this out on the card is because I am i don't wanna open up all of the cushions. I just feel like that would be such a waste. I'm gonna go ahead and donate what I don't use. So I'm gonna start with vanilla since that is the shade that I normally use and go from there. So let me go ahead and find vanilla in this case that they sent me. Let's see. Oh. It's the first one I pulled out. Okay, so let's open this up. Here is the case. Oh, with the elephant on there. Typical, you know, cushion foundation case. And is this made in, oh, it's made in Japan. I was expecting it to be made in Korea. Uh, most cushion foundations are made in Korea, but this is made in Japan. And it does come with an extra cushion. So that is awesome. Let's see how much product is in here. So there is, 12 grams in each cushion. Let me just make sure. Yes, 12 grams in each cushion. So 0.42 ounces in each cushion. So between the two of them, you get 0.84 ounces. And then inside the box, there's a little pamphlet about the foundation and about the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. I just love this picture, this little guy. All right, so here is the inside of the compact mirror a flat sponge here and then flips open. Again, very typical um, cushion foundation packaging. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the seal here. Yes, so satisfying. And here is vanilla. All right, so I generally apply cushion foundations with a sponge. I just think it goes really well together. So I just went ahead and cleaned off my Sonia Kashuk sponge. And I did pull out the Chantecaille uh, primer that I love to use. This is the Ultra Sun Protection Sunscreen SPF 45 primer. Um, but I do want to test out this foundation, do this full day wear test. Uh, kind of all by itself, but I am also curious <laughs> how the primer may affect its longevity and, you know, the wear and all of that stuff. So I'm going to apply the primer to half of my face. <laughs> this will be interesting. I'm going to apply this to half of my face. So I'm just going to shake this up. It has a very liquidy consistency, so you really need to shake it up. So I'm putting it on the right side of my face. I'm probably gonna keep saying that to remind myself, but I'm gonna put it on the right side of my face. So primer applied. 
All right, and now for the foundation. So again, I'm using vanilla, and that's the shade that I use in their Just Skin Tinted Moisturizer. It's also the shade that I use in their Future Skin uh, Gel Foundation. So I'm pretty confident this is gonna work for me, but I am going to apply it uh, first to the side without primer in case I need to remove it and maybe try a different shade. But I'm gonna go in with my sponge. I'm just gonna press it down onto the cushion and apply. Yeah, I think that shade works for me. I think it's a little bit, like a teensy bit deeper than my next shade. You guys probably can't even tell, maybe right there you can tell. But I just feel like that looks a little bit more natural. Like very rarely is your face the exact same shade as your neck, unless like you never go outside. So I think vanilla works, which is great. I don't smell, I don't smell any sort of fragrance or scent or anything. So that's great. And I'm just gonna apply this to this half of my face so we can uh, do a little comparison. That Ultra Sun Primer has no tint or color or anything, so we'll be able to see what kind of coverage we have with this cushion. You know, immediately I see a nice kind of like blurring effect. Ooh, wow. Ooh, fabulous so far. It looks really, really blurring right here. I have like larger pores here. Those seem like completely camouflaged, but there isn't a lot of coverage. So you can still see my sunspots here, the redness around my nose. I don't know if you can see a comparison there. It's like dampened a little bit. I wanna say with this first light layer, I got like a light medium coverage, which is really nice. It's really, just really, really natural. Oh, but it's making my skin look so soft. In terms of the finish, I would say it's a very natural finish. It doesn't look too matte. It doesn't look too radiant either. It just has like a really nice kind of subtle, subtle glow. Oh, that's quite lovely. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and apply another light layer on here. I just wanna see if it's buildable. My personal preference is for coverage like this, very light, light medium. I like how natural it looks, but it definitely has like a slight perfecting to it. I think it looks really lovely, but let's see if we can build this up. Oh yeah, I see a bit more coverage. I still feel like we're in the light medium realm, but I do see a little bit more coverage. So this is buildable, but just slightly. I don't think that you're ever gonna reach anything beyond like a medium coverage. Oh, but this, I can't believe how blurred and like soft my skin looks right here. Wow, I'm gonna zoom in just like right in this portion of my face. And you can just do like a quick comparison between these two sides of my cheeks, I, I just, yeah, I just feel like this isn't just perfected in terms of base, you know, just in terms of like color and foundation or whatever. It looks like my skin is completely smooth. Where here, I f you know, I see my larger pores. I see kind of like a, the natural kind of aging <laughs> texture to my skin here. But this looks like baby butt cheeks right here. All right, let me go ahead and apply this onto the side with primer now. And let's take a look. See if we see any major difference. All right, there it is applied all over my face. I'm just gonna take a close look here and see how it's sitting on top of the primer. It doesn't look any different to me. No, the initial application doesn't look any different on the primer than it does just on my skin. So we'll just have to see if it affects longevity or the wear of it or anything throughout the day. Oh, but I'm so happy with how it looks right now. I just love this like blurring effect. Oof, wow. Okay, so far it looks fantastic. So before I forget, I started this video at about eight o'clock this morning. So I'm hoping to do, um, I'll probably keep this on until at least like five o'clock. So that'll be a nine hour wear test. Maybe I'll do like a nine, 10 hour wear test. But I'm sitting here trying to figure out if I need to powder this because it also doesn't have like a tacky 
feeling at all, but I am tempted to put just a really light, light layer of powder down just in case. Maybe I'll just apply powder like underneath my eyes here and maybe a little bit in my T-zone where I get like a little bit more oily than the rest of my face and then leave the rest of my face alone. So I'm just gonna use the um, Chantecai HD Perfecting Powder. And again, just kind of underneath my eyes here a little bit and down like my T-zone. But that's it. I'm gonna leave the rest of my face unpowdered because I just don't feel like I need it. All right, so I'm just gonna throw on some really light, quick makeup and I'll be right back and we'll just do another quick check-in to see how the foundation is. All right, so I threw on just some light makeup. All the details will be down below in the description box as to what I have on my face, but I just wanted to do like another quick kind of check-in before I took off for the day. Um, but let's take a close look here now that I have some other products on. So I did dust that little bit of light uh, powder down. I do have blush, bronzer down. I don't have any highlight. So I really wanted to get a good sense of like, you know, what was going on with my pores here and everything. So anyway, I thought it better maybe not to put any highlight on, but everything is looking just really fantastic. I'm trying to like reserve my opinion until we're kind of done with like the full day wear test. Um, but let me do like a close up here and I'll just pan down from my forehead to my chin just so you guys can see um, like how smooth it looks everywhere. I do have some texture along um, my hairline on my forehead from some old eczema. Um, it's not picking up any of that. It's really kind of just blurred everything. Looks great underneath my eyes. Um, again, this is the side of my face that I have the primer down. Again, I don't really see any difference, but let me know in the comment section if you feel like you see any kind of difference between this side and this side. But it looks great around my nose, looks great around my chin, which, you know, can sometimes be problematic for some reason. So I'm going to go about my day. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a check-in, but I will definitely be back at the end of the day to do a final check-in with you guys and just let you know how it wore throughout the day. <laughs> All right, so I am back. It is the end of my day. I did not get a chance to do um, a midday check-in. So it's about 5 p.m. I've had this makeup on for about nine hours and today ended up being a lot busier of a day than I had originally planned. Uh, so I had a face mask on for about like two hours straight right around lunchtime. And then in the afternoon, I had my face mask like on and off for another couple of hours. So um, even though <laughs> my day was not what I thought it was going to be, it did actually make for a really good foundation wear test. So I am happy to report that after nine hours of wear and a lot of mask wearing, a lot of on and off mask wearing, I think this foundation looks fantastic. I don't think that it looks uh, worn away. I think the coverage is still there. And again, on my right side of my face, this half of my face, this is where I had the primer down, the Chantecaille Ultra Sun primer, the one with the SPF 45. I put that down on this half of my face. I don't have any primer on this half of my face. And the only place I see where it's made a difference, and it's the, the tiniest, tiniest little place, is right above my nostril here. So this is the side with no primer. I see the foundation just at the top of my nostril here. I, I'm gonna zoom in, but you're probably not even gonna be able to see it. But you know in foundation, it just kind of breaks up a little bit and you can kind of just see it basically. That's what's happened right at the top of my nostril there. And it has not happened on this side. That is the only difference that I see, that I've seen. Otherwise, I feel like the foundation has worn very similarly. I feel like in terms of radiance, it has stayed very, very consistent. And again, if you don't remember from uh, the first half of this video, I did put a little bit of the Chantecaille HD Perfecting Powder down just underneath my eyes and just down my T-zone. But everything, I mean, even with all my mask wearing today, everything looks like it's still in place. I feel like this foundation looks pretty much the same as it did when I applied it nine hours ago. I am so, so impressed with the longevity of this. I am very, very impressed with like, it's blurring right here that I see, like my forehead, my cheek area. 
I can't believe how soft it makes my skin look. And it hasn't faded strangely, like nothing strange has happened. It looks great underneath my eyes. I did not add any additional concealer because I wanted to see how this wore around my eye area all by itself. I think it looks great. I am really, really amazed at how beautifully this foundation has worn all day. So I'm gonna do some close-ups here. I'm gonna start at my forehead and pan down to my chin. Uh, but my, you know, my T-zone area, it, I wouldn't call it oily, but it is oilier than the rest of my face. And, you know, sometimes I'll see some issues around my hairline. I see no issues, no weird wearing away. I don't see any sort of strange texture being emphasized. Um, you know, around my eye area, it looks great. Around my nose area, except for that tiny spot right here, <laughs> where I feel like I see the foundation kind of breaking up a little bit. That is it, it looks great on the side with primer. I feel like the coverage is still there around my uh, my nose, like the redness is still uh, dampened. It, it just, it looks great. It looks fantastic. After nine hours, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. And something I didn't mention when I put it on, there's definitely no oxidizing uh, with this foundation either. The shade didn't change or alter in any way, didn't get any darker or warmer or anything like that. So no oxidizing. And I think it just looks fantastic. I'm just repeating myself at this point. Uh, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.